Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are going to continue our Neo 4J basic series. In the last lecture, we have seen all about the cipher language and why it is necessary for reading and writing data into Neo 4J database. So basically, it is an interactive query which allows us to have different clauses like reading the data, writing the data, trans committing the transactions and so on. So basically, we have seen all about the cipher, but enough talking. Let's get our hands dirty and learn all of these clauses and also follow along with me and we'll practice those on our sample data set. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first clause is reading clauses. So basically reading clauses will allow you to read the data which is already present in your graph database. So basically you can say it as a select clause which we usually use in the RDBMS. So basically in select clause we will be having like the column names which we want to fetch from our database table. So here as well we will be using the math statement and the optional math statement for reading the data and defining how your output should look like. So here in the match clause we will specify the patterns to search for in the database. So basically graph databases is not structured like the rows and columns. It is structured as per the nodes and relationship. You have to define your nodes and relationship and the pattern of those nodes and relationship. So basically with that you will be able to fetch the required data. And in the optional match you have to specify the pattern to search in the database while also using the nulls for missing parts of the pattern. So basically if the particular pattern is not present in your database, your query will not return anything. It will return as a null. So basically it helps you to continue your query even though you didn't find that pattern. And if you use match statement instead of the optional match, that query will definitely end. So here you have to understand the difference between match and optional match. So optional match will allow you to continue your execution and it will return the nulls for missing parts of the pattern. So let's jump on to the Neo4j desktop. So the first, so we have already installed Neo4j desktop on your PC. So let's get our hands dirty and start the cipher shell so that we'll able to read the data using this match and optional match. Okay, so this is our Neo4j desktop. So here, as you can see, in the beginning, you will not be having any projects in your database. So here we can import it using the predefined data sets which is provided by Neo4j itself. So here you can click on new and here you can import the sample projects. So there are different projects that are readily available such as the recommendation system, the fraud detection system so that you can directly start working on the data. So here we have already have some databases related to the recommendation system which we have imported. So all you have to do is just start the database and click on open which will head you to the Neo4j browser. So once we open this here as you can see this is where we can submit our cipher queries and it is very interactive. It is great tool for analyzing your data which is present in the graph and it allows business users to look into the hidden patterns in your data as well. So to get the ontology of the graph because you have to first understand the structure of the graph and how the nodes and labels are defined as well as the type of relationship between the two labels. So to allow you here as you can see on the left hand side we got the count of nodes. So basically we have like 28k nodes already present in our sample data set and as you can see we got the actor, director, genre, movie, person and user. So basically it's a movie data set and by the name you will able to understand that it's a movie recommendation system and also in the relationship type we have like the acted in, directed, in genre and rated relationships present and here are all the properties which are tagged to the relationship or the nodes in your database but you will not understand the ontology by just looking at these labels and relationships and the properties which are present. So to get the data, the first thing you have to do is you have to analyze and understand the structure and the ontology of your graph. To do that, you just have a procedure which is called db.schema.visualization. So this procedure will allow you to get the schema of your database. So as you can see, if we expand this, we have like the different labels here. We got the director, actor, when we have the user, which is also we have the person and the genre. So basically we have the actor which can also be the person and it has the relationship with the movie. 
actor has a relationship with movie as acted in so any particular actor acted in the movie as well as any particular actor can also direct the movie so it also has the directed relationship between these two nodes also we have the director node so basically director can also act in a movie so that's why we have both the relationships tagged to this director and the movie and also a particular movie can have a genre so it is present in a specific genre so it is pretty readable graph so this is just like a whiteboard approach if you want to build your graph we have already discussed about how to model your graph and how to convert the data into nodes and relationships you can directly start working on the whiteboard and just writing the labels and the relationships and how and what will be the direction of the relationships between these two nodes and also we got the user which basically has the rated so basically the particular user will rate the movie and also we got the person as well since actors are also person there could be like two labels assigned to a single record so you can relate it to the rdbms so if we compare it to the relational databases all these labels will have a certain table in the rdbms so we will be having like a actor table then the user table the director genre person and the movies table and we will be having like foreign keys and primary keys between these tables which also represents the relationship types in the graph databases so this is how your data looks like and to just peek into your data you can just directly click on any node to get some sample records so here as you can see we will we have just click on the actor and we got like 25 actors present in a database so it will return some 25 records for you to just see the structure of the graph so here as you can see here we have a particular actor and as you can see we got the actor as well as person label assigned to it so you can say it as this particular record is present in both table person table and the actor table if you are compared it to the rdbms and as you can see we have the actor which is born on 1879 and died on 1970 also it has the imdb id so imdb is a great platform and i hope you movie nerds will already know about it so it is a eric campbell so basically this particular actor also present as a person label if we double click this this will expand it and gives us the nodes which are connected to this actor so as you can see this actor acted in a film which is called as immigrant so this immigrant movie came in 1970 so these are like all the properties which are present on each node and here as you can see in the relationship we also have the role that particular user has played in which is like the head waiter so this head waiter role is played by the eric campbell in the immigrant movie which came in 1970 so this is pretty self-explanatory and also there is another actor which played in the immigrant movie which is the anna pervians i don't know how to pronounce that name but this is what it is and also she played a role as an immigrant in this movie and also we have the albert austin which played the diner and the immigrant role in this movie so this graph is pretty self-explanatory but this is not the point we have to learn about all the clauses of cipher and how to read the data using the cipher so first one is as you can see we got the match so match will basically allow you to specify the patterns which you have to search in your database so as you can see the pattern means you have this pattern we have the two nodes which are connected using the acted in the relationship so to represent it we have already seen how to represent a node as well as the relationship in the cipher so we will directly go over to the command line and start writing our cipher query so here the first step will be the match clause then we have to specify the nodes which is like the starting point of our pattern so here i'll assign a variable to our node which is a and it should be actor so basically this is the actor so if we want to just get this particular actor as well as the immigrant you have to just search for a property in that actor label so here we can directly denote it in the curly brackets and we have the name of that actor so we can have like the name here then we give the colon and in quotes which is like a text format we can give the eric campbell name here so right now we just got the particular actor and we hold it in the a variable and as you can see we got the acted in relationship which is going from actor to the movie so here we can denote it in the square brackets and the relationship type is acted in 
so we have the acted in and the acted in is further connected so as you can see this is directed from the actor node to the movie node and here we will give us our movie node so i'll assign it a m variable and here is our movie so basically this will give us all the movies which are related to eric campbell and again we can return this pattern so our query will look out for this pattern in our whole graph and give us the result so the return clause is used to define how your output looks like we are going to also see the return clause in the subsequent topic but let's say we'll just return all here so as you can see we got the required pattern we got the eric campbell and the movie id so this is how the match clause looks like so let's say if the particular pattern is not present in the database so what we can do is we can just give like the directed in because chris campbell didn't actually directed in any movie right so we know that this pattern doesn't exist let's say we will return all here so if we return all here you can see there is no output to this query so if we use the optional match it will look out for the pattern and it will instead return the null instead of returning nothing so this is very useful if you have like long cipher queries and you have to check for any conditions which and patterns which are present in the database so if we just give optional before the match statement then let's see what happens so as you can see we got the null value here so it will help you to continue the execution even though that pattern is not available in the database this is the basic difference between match and the optional match and many of the developers will struggle using this optional match in the query because optional match is pretty expensive in some scenarios so you have to make sure that you are understanding the difference between match and optional match carefully this is all about reading clauses let's talk about the projecting clauses now okay so the next one is the projecting clauses so as you can see this will help us to project our graph and how our end graph will really look like so basically you can also get the tabular output as well as the graphical output which we just seen so graphical output will return you the nodes and relationships and the tabular output will give you all the properties which are present in a node or a relationship so as you can see the first clause we have already seen before one minute so return clause so return clause will define what to include in the query result set so it will be either a tabular form or it will be bunch of nodes and relationships so we have already seen it so as you can see we are returning the nodes here but let's say if you want to just display the name of that actor as well as the birth date of that actor that also we can do so we can use the return clause so let's say we have to return the name of that actor so we got the name in the name property here so we will give like a dot name because a represents the variable of actor and also we have like the a dot born here which is like a birth date for that particular actor so if we return it as you can see we got the tabular output as the name and born date of that particular actor this is very simple so the next clause is with clause so as you can see with clause will allow the query parts to be chained together so this will also help you to piping the result from one to be used as a starting point or the criteria to the next so let's say if you have a longer query here so let's say if you have a longer query you got like 20 to 30 lines of query and your start statement will have like some patterns which includes 10 15 nodes or and 5 to 10 relationships but you don't need that subsequently and those will be reducing in each step so as you can see here we are only returning the name and the bond which is only present in the actor node we are not even utilizing the movie node so why we should return that and keep that in the last return statement so before that we can add like with clause here so let's say we have the with clause and we are only needing the actor node here so it filters out the movie node and it will not be used or we cannot use it in the subsequent statements so if we just return this the query will not be hampered but if you just get only the movie then this will give you the error that variable a is not defined because that variable we are not passing it 
using the with clause so with clause will really help you to pass only the required variables or the nodes or maybe relationships in the next steps so let's discuss that with the example which will really make sense because this is not making much sense and you will not able to understand it correctly so let's say if you have the actor node and the movie node then we have the another operation on the movie node so here let's say we have to just then match on this movie so we are just using the match statement again and here we can maybe remove this and just give it star so here we are going to have like all the nodes which are connected further to this movie so we have all the relationships so we can denote like star here and also here we can denote just empty or maybe give some variable which is like just node 2 right so here we are getting all the nodes which are connected to that particular movie so here we are not at all using our actor node so why we should keep that so to only get the m node which is movie node we can just directly filter it out using the with m so only you can use m variable which is movie in the subsequent step where we are matching it matching all the nodes and returning it in the last return clause so as you can see we got all the connected nodes here to that particular movie so here if we just expand this we got like the movie here we got like the user then we have like another user which rated this movie also we have like the actor as well as the director of this movie and all other three actors and also Crick Eric Campbell is also present here uh, but we are not passing it using the with clause we are only limiting it so with clause will allow you to just filter out and only pass the certain information which is required into uh, the subsequent processes so this is how you can use the with clause in the cipher let's talk about the another clause now so next we have the unwind here so unwind is basically expand the list into the sequence of rows so it is very easy to understand so here like collect is used for converting some nodes into into list and here we can use unwind to just expand that list into a sequence of rows so let's talk about the unwind now so here let's say let's create a list here so we have like two users which are which are connected to this movie so let's say we have like the user here so node 2 will have the user and if we just return this we got the two user along with the movie so let's say if we collect those users and just collect node 2 as the nodes here and let's return the nodes now so here we got the nodes but collect will only make sense when we are passing some properties inside it so let's say if you just pass the name of those users so let's say we got the node 2 dot name here and once we return the names here so let's re rename it as names and return it as you can see we got the list of the users that particular movie has submitted ratings to so basically we got the list but let's say if you want to explode this list and convert it into number of rows then we can use the unwind operation here so basically we have the list named as names so in the next step let's unwind those names here so let's unwind it so we will unwind the names as like the rows here and we will return the rows now and if we return it as you can see our components has converted into the rows so you will say what is the actual use of unwind here we are going to see in the subsequent lectures where we will see how to utilize this collect and unwind operation in the complex cipher queries but for your basic understanding collect will convert some values into a list and the unwind will unwind that list and convert it into the individual values which you can return it in different rows so this is very simple to understand so this was all about the projecting clauses let's head over to our next clause which is also very important and used while manipulating the data so now let's talk about the writing clauses here so here we have like different writing clauses which you can use to manipulate or create or delete the nodes in your database so as you can see the first one is the create so as the name suggests it used to create the nodes and relationships in your graph 
So let's jump over to how to use a create class. So let's say if you want to create a node in your graph. So here we will use the create class and we will just create another node. So let's say we have to create a person here. So here we have created a person. So to create a person, you have to assign a particular label to it. It is very important because every record will have some label in your graph and you have to define the some properties to that person. So let's say we have the name here, then we have to give the name. So name will be, let's say I'll give my name and here our next is like we have like some age. So I'll be having some age here. So this will create a person node which has the label person and also has the properties like name and the age. So this is how you can create a person label and let's just return it and see how it creates the node. So we'll return the A. So as you can see, the node is created in our database, which has the label person, which has the age and the name. So let's say if you want to create a relationship with this node. So if this person has acted in some movie, let's say so to, to just do that instead of create, let's say we will just match it. So match will match that part, find that particular pattern which is nothing but this particular node in our database and after that we can just create another node. So here we will create another node which is like the movie here right and the movie will have some certain name here. So the name is like the Hulk maybe for example. So here we also created a node here and to create a relationship we can also use like a create clause here. So we can again use the create clause and to define a relationship we already have our variables which is a which is tagged to a person which we just created and also we have the movie which we are going to create in this query. So here a then we got the relationship. So relationship type would be like acted in and then we can give our newly created node which we are going to create in this execution which is m. This is very simple but this will throw an error because we don't have any direction to our relationship. We should have some direction to our relationship. So here it will make sense that a person should act in a movie. So the direction will go from left to right. So just give that and we will return all the nodes which is a comma m that's it. If you run this it will create the movie node also it will create the actor relationship between the person and the movie node. Just return it and as you can see we got the person node which was already created so we have just grab that using the match so this will look out for this pattern which is in case this person node and we got our movie here which is the hulk this was very simple let's jump on to the next clause here so the next clause is like delete so delete basically as the name suggests deletes the nodes or relationships or the paths so any node to be deleted must also have like associated relationship which has explicitly deleted so what it means is before you can delete a node, you have to just delete all the relationships which is assigned to it. Otherwise it will throw an error. Let's do that in our example. So as you can see, we have already created the movie and our user. So let's just get this person now and let's try to delete it. So to delete it, we will just match that and get the pattern, which is nothing but the node and we will try to delete this node. And let's see what happens if you execute it as you can see we cannot delete the node because it still has the relationships so to delete this node you must first delete its relationship so to re delete a relationship you just have to grab this acted in and then delete it so to delete a particular relationship you have to write a match clause and then you have to just go ahead and grab the relationship which is tagged to it and then you have to delete the R here so here you will able to delete this R and then you can able to delete the node. So if you execute it, as you can see, we have got like deleted one relationship here. And once you get this person and try to delete it, it will delete it right away. So if you delete this, as you can see, it is giving as deleted one node. So this is how you can do that. But there is another workaround or there is another way to delete a particular node from your graph, which is that detach delete so with detach delete you can delete a node or set of nodes and all the associated relationships will automatically be deleted 
this is pretty simple so here let's say we got the actor node here and let's jump on and get our eric campbell again so we will just match our person so this node is not present and we will just hold on to our eric campbell here so we'll just give the eric campbell it don't have any age and let's return this so if you return this node it has some movie assigned to it so it has some relationship and node connected to eric campbell node so if we just directly try to delete it it will not allow us because it still has the relationship but we if we use detach delete it will delete the relationship including the node which is nothing but the person node so just detach and delete a and there you go it deleted the node as well as it deleted the relationship which we got in the result here so this is how you can use the create clause and delete clause to create and delete the nodes in your graph database so the next one is set operation so set operation is nothing but updates the label on the nodes as well as the properties on the nodes and relationship so this is pretty simple so the set can add another label to your node so if you have an actor node which has like actor label and if you want to add like user label to it you can easily do that using set and if you in your actor if you want to add like another property in that node you can also use it using set let's do that now so as you can see we got the eric campbell here and it got deleted so let's pick another actor here so we have like the anna pervins here i don't know the pronunciation of this so i'll just paste it over here so as you can see we got this particular person so we'll just return the person a so let's say this particular person has like two labels actor and person but we also have to add another label to it so our label could be like director maybe so we can do that using set operation so you have to just use it between match and return so just use set operation will get the variable first that is the first step then give the colon and you can add the next label so here we will add like director here and we will just return that node so if you execute it as you can see we got the director label added to our person node or the actor node so here we can also add another property let's say we have to add like age property to it so we can do that using the set operation so here to just set some property you have to you don't have to use colon you have to use dot here so you can you give like set a dot and the property name so we can give any property name here we can maybe give like age and the age could be maybe 30 right and if we return this it will have the age mistakenly i have just given the 300 here so i'll just rerun it as you can see the age property is added and the value is 30 this is so simple and opposite to our set clause there is a remove clause so remove clause will be used for removing a certain label or a property from your node or the relationship so for relationship it will go same way you just have to assign a variable to your relationships like maybe you can give r we can just set some property to it which is like r dot h is equal to 30 this is so simple as that and remove will is the negation of the set which removes any label or the property from this node so let's remove that director label and the h property here so just instead of set just use remove here and you don't have to just give equal to 30 because it already has the value so this will remove the h property from our person node or the actor node so as you can see if you go into this yeah the age is no longer there and also just let's remove the director label as well so we'll remove a here you have to remember again you have to give like colon because for for defining the label you have to give colon and for defining a property you have to mention the dot here so a colon director and we will just return it again and as you can see the director label has been removed from our person and actor node so this is how you can easily remove the any property or label in your graph and this will help you for daily ingesting your nodes and relationships or the, maybe you can say the whole data into your graph so this is like a for each clause so for each will update the data within a list so whether it could be like component of path or the result of the aggregation so this is part of complex cipher so let's focus on the basics first because we will not be using for each very often while loading the data 
it is only useful while loading the data or getting the basic patterns from your database so for easy manipulation reading writing everything this clauses which we learned are very much enough for you but in the next lecture let's talk about some complex clauses like for each clauses also we have the set clauses we also have like where conditions pattern matching etc etc there are so many options there are different functions like mathematical functions that we have the aggregation functions to able to aggregate the output and get the meaning out of your data so this could be really fun but let's stop here and in the next lecture let's talk about the advanced cipher clauses so i hope you understood this so if you have any difficulties you can let me know in the comments and we can talk about it further that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture thanks for watching